All right, it's Nasty Neil. And Annabelle Ector. And this is Dinner. And a movie. The Return. And it's a special night because it's not only one movie. It's two movies. We've got a double feature. Mm -hmm. Creature double feature. It's weird because it's a classic film, Wolfman. Probably most of you have seen this at least once or twice, Mm -hmm. if not several times. But it's on the big screen, and as everybody knows, big screen experience is just different than watching Mm -hmm. at home on your theater system. Right. Forget it. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't going to do it, well. but See, it. no turning heads. You're yeah. in Cambridge, people. There's no turning heads to anything. This uh-huh. is a crazy, weird town yeah. full of nutbags. I feel like I, I fit in now. Exactly. This place is great. Mm. If you're crazy, I'm telling you, come to Cambridge. Yeah. And then you can check out the Brattle Theater. We are back at the Brattle Theater, the mm. wonderful Brattle Theater, right off of Harvard Square. It's easy to find, a wonderful place. They show all kinds of interesting films all yeah. the time. Lots of horror stuff, which is great for us. Mm-hmm. And we it's dig not it. midnight. Yeah. Sorry, Coolidge. Uh-huh. Love, love you, but not yeah. at midnight is a bonus. Yeah, especially for me. We have to stay up till about 6 a.m. if yeah, uh, before we go into the yeah. Especially for me, because I work. <laughs> right. Right. The one I, I, I really have no problem with it, but uh, <laughs> I'm just a hobo, basically. I drive the car, uh, a job. What I am I? Responsibility she, she found me, this, like she found me in this alley over here <laughs> with computer <laughs> access. I don't know. So anyway, they're editing videos in the alley. So we've got Wolfman, and we also have Dragon Man Hell. Now, I have not seen Dragon Man Hell before. It's something I've been interested in for a long time, yeah. ever since I saw commercials and mm-hmm. all that stuff. And uh, finally getting the chance yes. to see it. It's it's excellent to yeah. be able to go to the theater and get the experience like it was the first time. I have s- I have seen it before, mm-hmm. and I'm looking forward to uh, seeing it again and seeing your reaction to it because that'll be a lot of fun. Yeah, I can imagine. Mm-hmm. Now, it'll be really cool to see what other people's reactions are going to be, too. Yes. It's always a good time to see how everybody feels about that's it. That's a huge a part. It's a huge part of going to these uh, theaters like the Brattle Theater is to see everyone's reaction, and you feel it. You can feel the atmosphere, Absolutely. and it really adds a lot yeah, to, to the experience. There's usually a lot of people in the audience, especially because they're older movies, so you're not as gun-shy about laughing and mm-hmm. things like that. So hopefully everybody will have a good yeah. time. We'll and usually time. at the Brattle, it's a real mix of people. Yeah, a- it's A mix true. of ages and, and, and different groups, so it yeah. makes for a lot of fun. Sane people, crazy people, mm-hmm. we find them all. Yeah. Right, right here. And we want to thank the people at the Brattle Theater for letting us come out here and uh, talk to people. Most people would be like, no. But they're like, yes. <laughs> no, they're, they're all about the publicity. Yeah. And we're right there for you, Brattle yeah. Theater. And it's freezing out here. She's got gloves. I don't. These rings ahead. These rings are uh, freezing my fingers. Cold. Yes. So I think we should wrap it up and get in the theater. All right, let's go. So we just saw Drag Me to Hell. Yep. Yep, my second time. It was my first time. <laughs> yeah, and uh, it was awesome. Say so I got one full scream. Excellent. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah. Which part was that for? Um, it was the part when like she woke up in bed and she thought she was next to her boyfriend, but oh. then it was the yeah. old woman With that the like, drum was too and trying to grab her, and then the worms <laughs> out of the mouth. Yeah, <laughs> it was a little. Yeah. Rubs was a little, a little intense. <laughs> yeah, it's so awesome. So I told him he's gonna act, like. I'm not gonna be walking in the dark at all anymore. Give <laughs> yeah. so. some time. I'm gonna invest in a few night lights. Exactly. Yeah. Well. Is this a movie that really adds a lot when you see it at the theater with uh, with other people? Oh, yeah. for sure. Yeah, you have to have an audience there. Uh, yeah, the audience reaction makes it all better. So. So do you guys awesome. normally see horror movies, or do you a fan of the Brattle? What brought you out to this particular movie tonight? Uh, I'm just a fan of the Brattle. Yeah, I just love all the old movies and everything. Uh, but definitely a horror fan, huge Sam Raimi fan, which is Excellent. what brought us out tonight. Yeah, but uh, yeah, no, it's just everything. Love the variety they have here. Yeah. So how do you feel? Uh, I noticed in this movie that there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of humor mixed in with the, the scary parts, and yeah. that works really well. What do you guys think about that aspect of this? Uh, <laughs> He likes it. Yeah. Just made me more mad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no. Personally, I love it. I don't know. Something that make you mad because you're jumping and then you get <laughs> exactly. And then it's like, oh, we're laughing <laughs> now. I'm like, oh, it's so funny. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I love it. I think it's something that a lot more horror movies need. Uh, it's hard to pull off sometimes. Yeah, very hard. I think it takes a skilled director. Uh, yeah, horror movies get way too serious now. Focus on. I don't know, wrong things, the violence and loses the fun aspect, so. Yeah, it reminded me of Kevin in the Woods a little bit. I've yeah, seen that one, that was so. Great. Excellent movie. Yeah. yeah, so I loved it. Yeah, great. I'll see it a third time if they bring it back. Excellent. So if you guys really quick want to give us a first name and where you're from. Uh, Peter. Uh, 
We're from Cambridge, but we just moved out from California. So oh, excellent. love that we found the bridal here. Excellent. And what's your name? <laughs> Jennifer. Okay, great. Well, it's a pleasure to meet you guys. And yeah. uh, maybe we'll see you here again sometime. Oh, definitely. <laughs> All right. Thank you. you so everybody, uh, are you here for the horror movie? Yes. Both the movies? Are you fans of the bridal? Tell us your stories. We are here for just We, yeah. we dragged them yeah. to drag me to hell. Yeah, yeah. So pretty much. Yeah. 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 I hope you guys didn't literally feel like you were dragged to hell. We no, I don't. Some of them, maybe. Some of them. <laughs> maybe him. I came willingly. So <laughs> Who among you are actually horror fans normally? Uh -oh. I don't do oh. well with the genre. <laughs> Okay, all right, so that's interesting. So, uh, people that not necessarily into horror, what did you guys think of the experience of Dragon Um out? I mean, as far as if it's just, just supposed to be a horror movie, yep. I think it works. I, I, I jumped <laughs> through, through, through many. How do you uh, feel about like, the flies going in the nose? Yeah, and then the, the flies, uh, uh, and whatnot. Uh, the kitten being the sacrificed. Kitten. Uh, I didn't watch that part. So. No. no. Close your eyes. Did you know it was coming? Have you, has anybody here seen this before? Uh, yeah. Well, they have. They have but, yeah, uh, I've, I've never seen it. But. So, are those that were watching? kind of amused knowing what was coming and people were going to be oh, jumping I'd forgotten and a lot so it was <laughs> nice there was some music <laughs> value shock for you was it fun to see their reactions that <laughs> yeah it was hilarious <laughs> he was <laughs> gagging like with the bomb yeah. he was like oh I feel the arms in like the mouth. embalming <laughs> fluid when yeah, she was I mean, yeah like I said, I don't do well, but I enjoyed it. And if, if that's all that a horror movie is supposed to do is give you that kind of... <laughs> it was much more... Yeah. Yeah. It was works. much more gentle than the last one we saw here, which was Antichrist. So... Uh, <laughs> you guys saw Antichrist? Yeah, we saw Antichrist here with you! That was Kendall Theater. Oh, shit. Yeah, okay. there you well, go. Either way. Cool. There was no scissor scene in this movie. No. No. <laughs> There was no. <laughs> anyway, this anyway, so was a good one. We liked yeah. this movie. No, this really enjoyed great. it. It was a lot of yeah, fun. It was, it was a lot of fun. Was, I'm Victoria. I'm from San Francisco. Yeah. Uh, Adam Dezago, uh, Worcester, Mass. Mana, Finer, Long Island, New York. Uh, David Gates, Worcester, Mass. Teresa, Worcester. Paul Pembroke, Mass. What brings you all together? Because this is a real mix of uh, people here. Uh, let's just say the internet. Let's just <laughs> right, well, go with that. Okay. All right. <laughs> nothing nothing fishy at all. Yeah. <laughs> all right, change of plans here at dinner and a movie. Yeah, Grendel not working out so no. much. Uh, very crowded and yes. loud. And very small tables. So we want to sit in this nice corner booth. He said, no, that's not happening. No, it was like a big round table. Like, that's mm -hmm. five people only. So Grendel, you lose. Yeah. Everybody yeah, out there, Grendel, we told yeah. them you'll be on YouTube and all yeah, that. Yeah, we even told them. We like, we would nope. put you over. I mean, if it was good. We would have put over the service if they let us sit down anyway. Absolutely. We take care of people that take care of us. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So remember so, uh, that out there. <laughs> Folks, we're at the Border Cafe. It's a great restaurant. I've actually been to this location in uh, Harvard Square, Quaint, Harvard Square mm -hmm. Cambridge. Uh, there's also one in Route 1 in Saugus, Massachusetts, I believe okay. the location. Very, very good stuff. So I think you'll like it a lot. I don't think it's like the last place I took you that I'd been to before that was kind of Mexican themed, which yeah. was very disappointing. Right. This is good. All right, I'm looking forward to it. It smells really good. It's great. It's like a Mexican Cajun uh, uh -huh. whatever. So we're gonna I think check we have out a this good menu. server tonight, by the yes. way. I think he'll be all about it. I'm just going to say I'll have this. Yeah, we're, wait, margaritas. That's where I'm at. Yeah, my, my eyes went right to it. Uh, a lot of different sized margaritas, mm -hmm. not necessarily special flavors. Right. They do have a strawberry or melon one. That's not I very think, exciting. No, I think I might go with the original Texas margarita. I'm kind of shocked that there's not more margarita flavors. Yeah, I am too. I, I saw a lot of uh, cool looking ones going by, it seemed like yeah. white ones. I thought it was like coconut. Yeah. I think I will probably get. I already said I was getting, so if you pick the same thing, it's, it's I'm gonna you copying uh, me. I'm not getting that. You can't accuse me I'll of uh, stealing the... the French dip this time either. Sure. It was so close. So close to stealing my French dip. My traditional French dip from the Grendel. You're like, I think I would like the French dip. I just told that's you about what, it, Neil. Well, I, that's what I get all the time with Bobby Burns. Me over like that, messing with my French dip. I thought loving. at first. I think thinking at first is, is uh, takes precedence over saying at first. You can think at first if I've gone there like for ten years. How I've do I know? How, ten years. how am I supposed to know this? I'm not a mind reader. Just saying, I thought at first. Mm -hmm. But anyways, so Mulder. margarita. I, <laughs> I just I 
will I will just let it go. This is a learning moment for all of you out there. Every once in a while, you'll encounter some kind of like stubborn, I was ready to throw down. I was stubborn really, nasty, nasty was, man like Nasty Neil. This is where the nasty comes from. And you just got to go, you know what? Mm -hmm. You're right. So if you're in a relationship, this works. It just stops everything. Mm -hmm. You just say, you're right. I, I kind of think that, I think life would go better if anyone just said, I'm right. It's better. Uh -huh. It is better in some ways. It sounds like you're caving in, but really what you're doing is you're giving yourself sanity. Because inside your mind, you know the person's not right, but they're so delusional, they'll never cave anyway. So you might as well save yourself the stress. All this over a French And deal. just, you're right. <laughs> Thank, See? You. Thank you. I'm going to cut that out and put it on a constant loop. <laughs> That'd be your ringtone. Yes, you're right. <laughs> you're right, you're right, you're right. Music to my ears. <laughs> I can also cut it out now and use it in uh, in future episodes. <laughs> you know, this, like, my mouth will be moving. Uh -huh. Sorry, this is not Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. Can I get the Jose Cuervo gold margarita? Do you frozen or on the rocks? On the rocks, please. No. Oh. Definitely. Thank you. You could probably see my ID. Let me grab the on here for you. I'm going to have Very the original flatter. Texas margarita. On the rocks. Yeah. Give me one second. These gray hairs. They've been there as they did. Thank you. They were just asking him to be nice. Oh, asking me because I look so youthful. Yeah. Probably heard you talk and all this stuff about the French dip. They're like, she's got to be like 12 or something. <laughs> you care this much about a sandwich. Wow. That's a look. Pretty cool. It's that dark sunglasses at night. Yeah. It makes you look cool. Like it's anybody like, that wears like that, they either ass. look ridiculous <laughs> or you're kind of like mysterious and intrigued. Like, uh, who is that man? Sharply dressed man in those dark sunglasses. What's what's his secret? What's the what's so his mystery? Keep them on, is what you're saying? Yeah, it's totally your call. You did see movies tonight, by the way. People yes. were not just here to like mm -hmm. bitch at each other. We want to make these episodes shorter, she tells me. <laughs> So let's talk for a half hour, and then we'll we'll talk about something else. This is the appetizer uh, to the We're gonna have a good time too. Delicious. Ah, uh -huh. beverages have arrived. Thank you very much. Yeah. Yes. Thank you. What's your name, by the way? We'll mention you on here. Right. We have Blake. Blake's a good dude. Blake is lovely. So far. I think he's a little concerned yes. that he might be involved. I, I, I do always kind of wonder what goes through people's mind when they see us setting see up videos. See guys with the camera at the end of the table? Hopefully they're frightened as hell and they will I give us to, the best service possible. I'm supposed to taste possible. it taste at the same time. Yeah, whatever. I was very I know thirsty. how you are. Oh, I was very thirsty because because some people brought uh, their own drinks and I was, I was left in the dust. You could have brought your own. I, I asked like you before the feel bad. theater if you wanted anything to drink. Like, <laughs> she's, nah. saying, she's saying, just say your drink just spilled. I was punished by God. My drink just spilled a little bit. God hates you. That's true. Uh, That's true. He loved me. We're tight, buddies. <laughs> the atheist is so tight with God. <laughs> you probably liked somebody who didn't believe you like you had any power. Like, yeah, you're a pretty you funny like a, guy, Neil. Just treat you like ah, a you get a dude, pass. Then. See, it's, it's like, like when you go to a con. <laughs> exactly. I was bring it back to a conversation that no one knows about because it was off camera. But you treat God just like he's a dude, and uh, he'll treat you like you're a dude. Yeah. You're just like equal equal dudes in the universe. What if God was one of us? <laughs> what if he was a stranger on a bus? He's trying to find his way home. The beginning of my food review is that the salsa is very watery. Yeah, it's it's not. It tastes like um. I know some salsas have like a. It's almost like a bean flavor. I just wanted to knock it over. Not liking it. But I'm moving on to my uh, drink that Neil already had some of his. Well, hold on. We'll get rid of we'll this. Try straw. Oh, I got a float. What's going on here, man? Fuck it. I don't care. It's probably a piece of pepper. Piece of pepper. Yeah, I had something floaty in my drink, and I tried to get it out with my straw, and I just pushed it under. This might have been the line. That made a black speck. 
a running theme on the ship. Yes, uh, I would like to have the blackened chicken, please. You want beans and rice or jambalaya? I'd love jambalaya. Thank you, sir. I'll have uh, half and half fajitas. Uh, jambalaya sounds good. No, thanks. Thank you. All right, so these drinks here. Margaritas. I have the Jose Cuervo gold margarita. What do you have? No. Rude Ori man. Original Texas margarita. What's so special about that? I don't know. It's original. It's from it's Texas. Texas. Oh. Hey. <laughs> That's better. All right. I'm going to do it. Give them what they want to see. Hey. Same. Such an ego. I learned it by watching you. I'm always the one who's getting accused of you. You should be proud. I have taught you well, Annabelle Lecter. <laughs> Do I just say I told douchebag? <laughs> You're blind. <laughs> um, there's not enough salt on the rim. I'll tell you that right now. I'm actually going to have to salt the beverage itself. It's a very poorly, poorly salted rim. I don't know yeah, if they're reason, in a I rush. Think, I think it uh, it melted off. It's very kind of you to say. You're a very generous man. The old I, margarita I trick this. of putting the salt right into the drink. Who taught I, you that? I learned this trick from somebody one time. Yeah, who was that take wise, this line. amazing, genius woman that you knew? And you go like this. Let, let, let me show it to you. I wonder if people are going to stop liking me now that I'm growing this ego. They're like, what she's do you mean, an stop? Act. What? <laughs> I'm what? kidding. What a mean man. So mean. You cut deep, Neil Jones. You cut deep. Alright. The margarita's good though, I think. Mm -hmm. It's it's uh, quite yummy. Ah, the, the uh, sauce is uh, like I said, it's really watery. It's hard to eat. Too thin. Not, I'll show not, you folks. Not Ready, flavorful. Here's a chip. Dib. And normally you'd scoop, but it's kinda like runny and bad. That's no good. You want some substance in your salsa. So, so what's the game plan here? I think we can talk about a couple of movies. We saw Wolfman. We did. First. So, over at our, our, one of our favorite locations, yeah. The Brattle. We the also saw uh, Drag Me to Hell. Yeah. And uh, when we were talking about going to see these movies, I, I couldn't I couldn't understand what they had in common. But I thought it was uh, it would be cool to see because it's the uh, first time I've ever seen the classic Universal monster movie on the big screen. And uh, Dragging Me to Hell, I, I'm a big fan of. And I know you've been wanting to watch it for a while. Yes, I have. And um, I really think it's a good movie to watch at the theater because I watched it. I saw it the first time at the theater, so I was looking forward to it. And then it hit me while I was watching The Wolfman. What they do have in common, and that is the gypsy. Gypsies, yes. Gypsies, gypsies and curses. It's a clever so, guy. So, yeah. Neil's nose. Yeah. I'm not just a funky hat and sunglasses. I got the brains. <laughs> So, yeah. he's also got rings. Funky. He's very excited. He's got his two uh, wolf rings. I love that one. It's like a gold bronze color. Mm -hmm. Very throw, shiny. Throw back to the very first episode. Which, um, where did you get that one? You this got, that one, like I, online, I see, yeah, I bought right? it online. I can't, Any I don't really remember. Store? I don't remember. I think I actually got it overseas. Oh. Um, actually, uh, nice Larry Lutz. Who's a cool guy from uh, Days of the Dead, mm -hmm. and he dresses up as the as a werewolf. I think you Oh, he's amazing. Yeah, those are amazing pictures. He has the costume. same ring. Oh wow! But his That's is cool. his is silver, so it's uh, mm -hmm. pretty cool though. Very cool. A little bonding dress, moment. Yeah, a man who dresses as the wolf man has a matching ring as me, so I was happy. That's cool. I think um, I get the most comments on this ring. It's an amazing ring. It's an amazing. I remember ring. Ari Mihailov liked it. The guy who uh, I was talking with, yes. and we're having a nice conversation. I was just saying he, he said, liked uh, my ring, but not as much as he liked her. Well, we were talking about uh, motorcycles because uh, he looks like a motorcycle kind of fellow. So I started a conversation, and um, we're talking and whatnot. And he was saying, "Oh, you gotta, you gotta find a friend and go on a ride, go on a ride." Uh, and then he said something about going with him on a ride. I was like, "Oh, that's cool." And he's like, "Gas, grass, or ass?" Yeah. And I said, "Well, I'll, I'll buy the gas." The gas. Yeah. He's like, well, I can buy the gas. Like, I think he said, I, I got, got the grass. <laughs> no, he said, he so, said, I have the gas. I don't smoke. The I don't smoke the grass. Uh, and I just uh, leave it up to you, folks. Just uh, kind of smile. Process of elimination. It's kind of. Uh, and then Neil went for a ride that night. <laughs> Whee! It was a good time. Uh -oh. he, he, he really showed me how to smoke a cigar that night. <laughs>
He's a good guy. He's really cool. We saw him later on that night. That was cool. So, Wolfman, let's go. Short and sideburns. Let's get into it. What? They're very short and sideburns. Are you sad? I don't know. You seem distracted, at least. <laughs> You're like looking at yourself like, my sideburns are too short. No, no, look alright. Never mind the right. segue into Wolfman. Let us focus on my. Let's <laughs> focus on me flipping the straw out of my drink. Man, you're only a little bit into that drink and you're already kind of like. I think, losing your shit. I think that's how you do a Wolfman. That's. convincing. I noticed his jaw was out. It's kind of the It was more of a bottom teeth were out than the top teeth. Yeah. Alright, let's talk about it. Wolfman. Wolfman. Black and white, very black, cool. Black and white, universal, cool. classic, horror yep. movie. And we've seen it before. Yeah. You've probably seen it before. If you haven't, I don't know what kind of childhood you had, yeah, but or why you'd be go out and see like it. This. It's not a long movie. I'm sure you can get it. You can probably find it on the internet. Yeah. Uh, but at any rate, I mean, it's like a cool classic movie, and uh, I think Lon Chaney Jr. is very likable. Yeah. And it's fun to just watch him because he's a, he's a likable character that you can really kind of get invested in what's going on with him. Even yeah. though he, well, Even though he's, he's a, a creep. little creepy. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know many notes we'll get about to that. that. <laughs> we'll get to that. Uh, I didn't well, remember that. Something interesting too, I thought, was um, uh, one of the characters was actually the girl he was courting, her boyfriend, said that um, that, that that he was doomed. That he was like, uh, he was like cursed, basically. He's a tragic guy. Yes. And when he said that, I really thought, you know, he really portrays that well. Just face, just something about him. He does look like, like a, a tragic, tragic figure. But one thing I noticed is that, you know, here's a guy, Lon Chaney Jr. looks to be in his 40s. Anyway. Yeah. But he's clearly playing the role of someone who's supposed to be a young man. Mm -hmm. The language that they have, the script for him, yeah. the things he says. He should be youthful, and the person they cast as his father looks like maybe ten years older than him. You know, so it's it's very odd. You know, yeah. they they pick this guy, and like you're saying, and, the, the uh, dialogue, just the way he's like, want to go for a walk, all the all the little things he's sporting with the girl, it's very uh, youthful, youthful. And, and naive, and yes, very absolutely. naive guy. And it was kind of funny because you see this scene in so many films. It's usually a teenager. Mm -hmm. Or like an adolescent where they're looking out the window, either with binoculars or whatever. And at one point, uh, early in the film, he's looking out. He's looking out. The, this goes to what we're saying. He's looking out the window with the. Uh, with and his dad's sees, giant telescope. Yeah, and he sees a woman over there in, in her room. And he's just got a big smile on his face. And you, oh, but it doesn't stop there. He no. suddenly sees her mm -hmm. doing whatever she's doing, and then decides, oh. I'm gonna find where she is in town, yes. which is a shop. Well, then it's a jewelry that, shop. Then he actually lowered the camera down, and I think it's find out about it the jewelry shop. Yeah. So he finds the jewelry shop and goes in and starts creeping on the girl. He's like, hey, "Hello, I'd like to buy some jewelry." And she's, "What, do you, like what a, would you like?" And like a he's, "Oh, in I'd really like some." Of the, and he describes the earrings that she had while he was creeping room. on her. And she said, we don't have that. And he's like, oh, I think you do. <laughs> and it's so weird. Let's right, give me a break here for a second because I'm going to make myself fajita. This is going to be so good. So you got a little cup of jumbo. Right. This is what I always do, Annabelle, when I get the fajitas. People out there, count the fajita shells so you can go forth and think about how Distribute. you're going to make these. All right. Oh, this place is so good. I hope you like your food. I'm sure you'll like the jambalaya. Jambalaya has um, andouille sausage, shrimp. I think it's also got bits of chicken in it. It's nice and flavorful, but spicy. It's just enough spicy that it doesn't overpower the flavor. It's very, very tasty. Some cilantro in there, fresh cilantro. Peppers. So good. Mm. Looks good. It is good. Show off your uh, pick it up on the plate. Or you can hold it in your hand. <laughs> you can do that too. We eat as our finger food. That's true. So I also have a uh, Cajun marmalade here. I'm gonna just like That's really cool. Just so you know what it tastes like. Yeah, that looks like really it, you good. Really yeah. it is. So everybody knows I have uh, beef Tasty. and chicken fajitas, and we got sour cream with it, cheese, uh, tomatoes, 
in the jambalaya. The only thing I'm surprised at there's no peppers. These are really good. The chicken, the chicken's excellent. It's real um, nice spice on it. May I actually give you a piece really of my nice. blackened chicken? All right. Okay. Thank you. So what I was saying, um, I put my fork into the chicken, and you could just feel how moist it was. Yeah, just that's. Some pressing into the chicken. The uh, the 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 chicken fajita, the meat for the, the fajita, same way. Which is, sometimes it's hard to get chicken because you want it well done, but you also you don't want to dry it out, so sometimes it's kind of hard to do. It's a beautiful thing. This place is good, huh? That's really good. Oh yeah. That's excellent. Kind of glad that the that the Grendel was too crowded. Yeah, right. Good call, Annabelle. Thank you, sir. Probably be a lot of this set it out because we're just gonna be eating it. It's very good. <laughs> now I put some of the rice from the jambalaya in the uh, mm -hmm. pita. It's really good by itself too. We're at him creeping on his <laughs> his love. Uh -huh. So okay, so he's creeping on her big time, and then he's basically asked her out on a date, and she says that she's engaged, and he. Doesn't give he, a shit. He doesn't. He doesn't even say that till later on, like when they're walking in the woods. Oh, world, that's right. Which that's is right, kind of comes right. as a surprise. It's like she's doing all this stuff. She knows he's like spying on her. Mm -hmm. Then she's walking with him and stuff, and then she happens to tell him, "You know, I got a fiance." That's right. Sorry about that. So backtracking. Her reaction is very bizarre to everything. Yeah. I mean, you would think uh, if someone would tell you they were spying in your window, you wouldn't be like, "Oh." Well, okay. she seemed creeped out at first. Yeah. But then I guess he put on the charm. He said, oh, I'm psychic. That's how I knew you had your earrings. <laughs> and she didn't seem to buy that at all. No. Well, she seemed like a reasonable woman who was being nice because it was mm -hmm. potentially a customer. But then he said, uh, I'll meet you at 8 o'clock. And she's no. Mm -hmm. She kept saying no. And then later on, they showed it's dark outside and a little misty. And she's waiting outside the damn shop. Girl. Mm -hmm. What kind of standard is it set? I mean, like, what do men think when they see that? Is it like, oh, that's a good plan? <laughs> yeah, it's by in their window. And they just keep telling I'll see you. Right? No matter well, what's going on. So, he goes in the shop. I mean, he's, he wants, he decides that he's going to get a cane. Mm -hmm. Randomly. Well, he wants to get a pair of earrings. Yeah. And, uh, so she's showing out the different canes. And finally they come to one that's this really cool cane with a wolf's head. And it's kind of long. And then she recites this kind of eerie poem mm -hmm. about, what? and I don't remember it off the top of my head, yeah. but about basically werewolves. Mm -hmm. And he's kind of weirded out by it and whatnot. And it's just so strange. Like, why? She, I mean, it's not like these are rustic people. I mean, it's a normal town. Yeah. And, and you can there's see nowhere from the in my normal or town something, right. that they know some crazy. It's not like it's a local werewolf myth yeah but the, so i thought that was weird but then even later on he goes to his dad and, and is talking with dad about it and he recites the same exact thing like yeah what's it, everyone knows about? this yeah and the you dad would, is like uh some kind you would, you of uh award winning maybe astro because, astronomer because he, he does get bit by the werewolf so maybe the werewolf has been around this town for all very good thank you very good you. you would think maybe um they didn't do a very good job of telling you this, but just the fact that the were you know the werewolf is there because he's the old uh he's the old gypsy. Bella Lugosi. Yeah. Is that Bella Bella the uh Bella the uh, gypsy? No, they call him excuse me. Bella. Bella. But the fact that there that there that there is there maybe uh maybe there have been killings and they could have went into a little more. But I don't know. I don't think so because um because so once Salome so uh, goes out with this girl, and and it's funny because okay so yes yeah, she's waiting outside for him for this creepy bastard that came into her jewelry shop, but she brings a friend. Yes. Total. So that was a good planning on her part. So they go uh, to a fair. Like the gypsies are in town, they have this big fair. They're going and, and stuff. And they end up going to uh, get their fortune told, right? Yeah, yeah. So, um, this you know, you know, red shirt of Star Trek girl goes inside 
to get her fortune read by Bela, and the other two are, you know, practically making out in the woods. And the girl, she's, it's just funny, like, you know, old-fashioned movies, so the guy's reading her palm all of a sudden, because, whoa, he sees something, and now he's going to read her palm, and it's like a uh, pentacle inside of her hand, like this funny, like, superimposed yeah. image. Yeah, it's like a shadow, basically. Yeah, it's pretty funny. Mm -hmm. and, uh, Special effects of the what, day. What was interesting, though, he actually had it on his forehead first, when he pulled, pushed oh, up yeah, his yeah, hair. Yeah. That's right. Which at first I thought it was a tattoo, but I think it was also the foreshadowing. Yep. I have to say that a pentagram, when it does, when it's not filled in in the middle, it, it's a lot less creepy. Yeah, it was just basically a star. Yeah, it looked like just like a star you'd see anywhere. Anything? Yeah, it didn't look. It, it really lost a lot of its power. The guy's a creep. Goes in the woods with this girl. Mm -hmm. Woman getting her palm read. Bella, oh, you've got to go. Yeah. Woman uh, leaves. Mm -hmm. Werewolf stuff happens, and yeah, uh, Lone Chaney gets well, bit. I have a question because when when um, the, the werewolf is attacking, then it's a wolf. Yes. And uh, he, yes. he beats the wolf to death with with the, uh, with, the with, with the cane, and then, uh, he gets bit, and then you know it's a really, really cool setup because then they find uh, they find Bella there dead. Obviously, he was a werewolf. His his thing heals up, but when he becomes a werewolf, he becomes a wolf man. A wolf man. Funny. Once uh, the gypsies find out that Lone Chaney, his name is uh, Larry. Once they find out that Larry is a werewolf, they just pack up instantaneously and yeah. leave town. But Bela is with them probably for his life. Yeah. And, and they no big whoop. Yeah, it's very, very, very peculiar. Crazy gypsies. Mm -hmm. I always like the, the kind of theme in a lot of the Universal movies where the uh, the town folks turn on somebody. Not quite the level like they do in Frankenstein, but it's still in this movie. He's like the outsider when he goes to the church, and every all the town folks just uh, they know something's not right with them. Yes. I like to talk about the uh, the transformation because you know obviously it's it's back in the day, but the transformation is done by the level of the feet. What? Yes, if they get progressively fuzzier, they're like, it's just a cut, cut uh -huh. scene, cut scene, yeah. cut scene, yeah. show the progression. But what blew my mind, made me laugh, is at one point, Larry, in his room, he's now found out from the gypsy that he is, in fact, a werewolf. He's stressing out. He sits down in his chair, pulls up his pant leg, and sees some extra hair. And you know what he does? He goes like this. <laughs> like, Damn man, it. oh shucks! Uh, that was just say, oh shucks, I'm a freaking werewolf. It's really funny. Like, I'm, I'm like, I wouldn't react like that if I was like, wow, my yeah. leg has suddenly got two inches of hair that wasn't there before. I like the look of the full werewolf, of the full wolf man. I think it's the whole dub, I think it's cool. But the transformation scene is is, uh, is kind of dated. What you can't you can uh, you can't go around, especially when he gets killed. I know that's at the end of the movie. And he goes backwards. There was a couple little parts that's kind of funny. He almost has like a fright wig on and like a kind of a pig nose or something. And One of the problems I have with um, with the first time you see the Wolfman, I don't know what they were thinking. I have no idea why they did this, but to so see Larry in uh, in his father's house in his room, he's going through his first transformation. He's really freaked out and whatnot. And then you see the Wolfman out in the woods wearing completely different clothes. He's wearing like a dark shirt mm -hmm. and other stuff and yeah. it's just not the same at all. Like, is a wolf man stylish? He's yeah, like, he's you like, know I'm what, gonna... I'm gonna ravage the town, but first, mm -hmm. I'm gonna go put on my uh, yeah. Armani shirt. I'm gonna say there should be a lot more ravaging. I know it's it's a, it's a, it's back in the uh, back in the day, but there is a, a lot of just a wolf man just walking around the woods. Going like, like people walking Arr. around looking for him. Or like you do. Arr. Arr. He doesn't kill many people. No, he really doesn't. He only kills one or two people. And um he's kind of a, kind of a wuss. Like he gets his ass kicked a lot. He gets he gets taken out by the trap and then saved by the old gypsy lady and then he gets uh, killed at the end. Yeah. And, by uh, getting beaten in the head. Yeah, and, and by his back. dad. Yeah. He does it. He, I don't think he wins any fights except for his, against his girlfriend. Mm -hmm. He just chokes her out. At the time that came out, there was probably nothing like it. 
Mm-hmm. It's probably pretty dramatic then. Yeah. But now, you know, yeah, of course it's fun to see. It's incredibly dated. Yeah, it and, looks uh, good. I mean, you know, all the stuff looks good, I think. Like, the scenery, the hats, all... Twiddle, he's a likable fellow. The first time you see Twiddle, after uh, Larry comes back from his night of werewolves and he's complaining, he says he has a bite, he's in bed, uh, his father's looking out for him. Father brings in a few people to, to check into the story. Yeah. There's, you know, someone I guess is kind of like a cop mm-hmm. and a psychologist. They're evaluating the situation. Basically, think the guy's crazy. Yeah. Which is in you every know, movie say, like this, you always think yeah. the person is crazy. Uh, uh sure. Thank you, Goldman. Please. Okay, right? I think I'm another one too. Another Texas. Yeah. Right as well. Yeah. Right. Yeah. We're on public transportation tonight. Um, what's weird was like they were so nonchalant about like these people getting killed and they're like don't bother him don't bother him let him let him go about his business and he, they even give back his cane thought, which was a murder yeah. weapon because they thought at the time so he came home but the gypsy was dead he'd been bashed in the head mm-hmm. and circumstantially Larry had said oh I killed a wolf by bashing it to death so they pretty much knew that he bashed this guy to death. And they're like, ah, oh, we could just, it was probably the fog. It was foggy. What the hell is that? It's a steak. Thank you. I have some steak goo. I'll try you want me to cut you a piece right off this? Would that be better for you? No. What is cheese? Thank you. The steak's really good. It's really spicy. Very good. And sweet. Yeah, it's, it's really tasty. It's like akin to a barbecue sauce yeah. level flavor. Mm-hmm. Very nice and smoky. Very tasty. Yeah, the, Properly they're... salted rim this time. Nice job. What do you think the reasoning was that, that they weren't uh, they weren't really pushing pushing them? Because he was rich? No. Okay. Well, I really do. I think it's it makes sense. Um, the guy was from a very elite family. The story was that he was uh, living it because everybody else is British. He'd been living in America for God only knows how long. He had an American accent. Had to explain that somehow. And uh, he was coming back because his brother had died in a tragic accident. And the father is planning on eventually willing the estate to this son, Larry. So, uh, very wealthy. And they uh, made a comment. Uh, Larry had said to his father how he'd been keeping up with the family the whole time, even though he was somewhat estranged, and found out that the father had uh, won some award for a paper very well-off family that was in a mansion Mm -hmm. i would assume honestly that that would be that's a good excuse to say why they let it go yeah you know very well sir very well sir that was whittle's on whittle was amazing and i i don't know there was something about him his movements and he had some he had some really cool facial expressions really over the top it really reminded me of lawrence harvey and then it was kind of funny because the actor's last name was harvey that's true. That was an interesting thing when you got to the end. Yeah. And you saw that, like, hey, mm-hmm. maybe it's in some distant relative. One of the big things I took away from and I wanted, like, everybody's hat. <laughs> Lots of cool Man, hats. that's a nice hat. <laughs> like, well, he cool. looks pretty sharp in that hat. <laughs> it was nice, uh, like, dress hats and, like, uh, just kind of... Casual hats. Casual, yeah, all around. <laughs> I was, I was, I was hat, a whole hat wardrobe of hats. <laughs> Oh my god, look at that. So Wolfman, alright. It's pretty anticlimactic. Plus you know, if I live back in the day. He's so interrupting me, dude. Silent movie actor. He doesn't give a shit. Silent. I'm, I'm sorry. just like, hey, in the movie, and he's like, but yeah, I did my hat. Well, you, you asked me a question right when I took a bite of food. The reality is, very quickly, mm-hmm. we both agree this. We talked about it very briefly outside the theater. Wolfman is, uh, of course, a classic movie, but it is very anticlimactic. Yeah. You know, you're expecting a lot, no. e- even for that time, that uh, era. You expect uh, more yeah. of a plot line. You expect more. They could have done a lot more. Frankenstein it. It very rushed, still lives very up. quick. Yeah. And, uh, you know, you see even Wolfman it's very quick, briefly. There's it, not a lot of intrigue. It's still really slow, too, where nothing yeah. really happens. It's basically yeah. just... He's the werewolf, and then it's them. And that's it. He's out in, the woods. out in the woods. And, and he gets uh, kind of bear trapped, yeah. and that's pretty much the end kinda, of the road. It kind of lives on just, just. It was probably a unique story at the time, the, the wolf man. It was fun to see it on the big screen. And we're seeing it. Mm-hmm. You know, if you haven't seen it, and you're a horror fan, yeah, you have if you to haven't see seen it, it you're a horror man, you're kind of an idiot. But 
if you haven't seen it, go check it out. Yeah. It's good to have in your in your list. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Put it on your resume as yeah. or and all and all wolf, werewolf movies uh, since then have uh, you know been inspired by it. So. True. All right. Let's go to the next movie. Yes, the all next right. movie, Drag Me to Hell. All right, the second movie, The Fall to the Wolfman, was Drag, Drag Me, Me to, to Hell. Hell. And uh, right away, this is this is pretty much a non-stop romp. It's uh, visually really fun. It's uh, visually just everything about it is fun, and it's, it's kind of nonstop. It's a excellent. lot of gross-out things. A lot Absolutely. of things that kind of make you jump, like a boo moment. It's perfect. It's a really good blend, and I was reminded of a couple of movies, uh, similar vibe, like Shaun of the Dead. Mm -hmm. Shaun of the Dead is overall comedy, but it does have some really good zombie yeah. scenes. Some yeah. there are some good I, dramatic. I, I think when you, I think moments. when you do a, com a comedy horror, it has to have some real level of horror in it for it to work, for yeah. the comedy to work. Evil Dead, especially Evil Dead 2 and, uh, and Army of Darkness. But I thought of uh, Dead Alive. Yeah. When, I was actually really worried when it started um, because they have a scene and it's a young boy and it's uh, some uh, somewhere they speak Spanish. I don't know yeah. where it was precisely. This really young boy's kind of in like a church-like yeah. environment, and he's he, there's an exorcism going on. It's pretty obvious, and the boy gets killed. And what happens is, uh, you know, the woman who's trying to help the situation, the spiritual person, whoever she might be at the time, young woman, is up on a balcony, and the kid gets like thrown by the demons on the floor. And up to that point, I thought it was kind of cool the way the demon was slapping yeah, everybody yeah. around. You know, not perfect mm -hmm. in terms of visuals, but and I a good concept. The kid gets smacked into the, into the floor on the first floor, and then the, the floor breaks open, and it's supposed to be like hell, and I thought, oh, Jesus Christ, this looks terrible. Like, the CGI, CG graphics on that was awful. Maybe it was better at the time, but I was like, this it's is, only few, only a couple this years is old. cheesy as fuck. This is not... Dear God, what have I gotten myself into? This is going to be another... I, I felt bad because I'm like, this is going to be yet another horror movie I tear apart. Uh-huh. So I, I really, do not have high expectations I, I had in my time. mind, I, I was pretty sure you were going to really enjoy this movie. I had seen it before. And it had a lot of elements that I thought you would enjoy. I knew it had the CGI elements. Some of them actually were really good. Yes, some Which of them I'll were. talk about later. But even the ones that weren't, I think, in a way kind of the cheesiness of them kind of added to the film especially once you were into it after that so the main character is a, a girl mm -hmm. she works at a bank yeah she's vying for a job as yeah. assistant manager of the branch you know, very again like shot of the dead very mediocre normal life yeah which i always think that adds to it too it's like you know it's a very mundane thing and it's it's kind of a silly thing if you think about like oh they're up for the, it's not even like the president it's the the assistant manager position yeah. And they kind of treat it like it's life and death, her and this other guy. Play up the idea that of her normal life. They're showing that she's in competition for this position to get assistant mm -hmm. manager with this guy who's kind of a douche. Yeah. He's an ass kisser and kind of cheating and cutting corners and mm -hmm. buying the guy tickets to shows and things like that. The mm -hmm. boss to kind of get an in. And she's like this decent girl. Yeah, she's so pretty So she's neat. really struggling uh -huh. to kind of hold her own because she's a good person. Mm -hmm. And it is very hard when you're a good and honest person to, to, get to kind of like get ahead of the people the that are cutthroat world. liars. Yeah. So, and, um, and part of this movie too is that there's actually, even though it's uh, you know, a short movie, it's fast, but there is character development in her character. Yes, for sure. And she starts off very meek and doesn't want to do anything, you know, against anybody. And uh, it progresses. And that's what happens. So she can kind of confronts her boss. Uh, what's going on with the promotion? And he's saying, well, this other guy, I don't even remember the guy's name. Yeah. But he's more aggressive, and we like that. And so she's gung-ho, I'm going to be aggressive now. Mm -hmm. And this old woman comes uh -huh. in, and dear just God. like the stereotypical uh, gypsy, but just played up way yeah, high. Yeah, she's got, like, you know, the head wrap. Uh -huh. and she's Crazy got a skirt eyeball. And, yeah, she's got one, like, very obvious a contact lens. Something I think. It's like a whited out eye yeah. and a normal eye. And she's got, you know, a very um, ethnic looking face. Mm -hmm. She's got the accent. Something it's all I, there. I think really worked in this movie is actually the high definition, which sometimes in a horror movie it's a it's a detriment, I think, because 
a lot of times you want to hide stuff yeah. and they kind of took advantage of with a lot of close-ups and where you could really get into the makeup and and the visuals and it really uh, helped in a lot of scenes off like the close-ups with the with the fly later on and the, and the eye the gypsy just everything about it I think it really added to the movie absolutely she's this old woman comes in she needs assistance because her house is about to be foreclosed on. She's already had two extensions from the bank in the past. She comes to the, our, our main, I don't even remember, I feel terrible. I don't remember the main character's name. I don't either. It's like a guy, Chris. Oh, okay. Chris. So, a old woman comes to her desk and sits down and she's, oh, yeah, to my Brown. house, my house. Oh, the bank, they're going to take it from me. I've yeah. been there for 30 years. And uh -huh. she's on and on, very sad and whatnot. She puts like this bunch of crumply looking bills. Because, uh -huh. you know, that's what happens when you're poor. You can't manage files. Mm -hmm. you got to have them all crumpled up and uh -huh. shaped. But she was kind of... That yes. kind of makes sense all, for our character because she's it. gross. Yeah. This old lady, I mean, yes, she's a pathetic old lady and you feel uh -huh. bad for her, but at the same time, she's disgusting. Like, one of the first things she does, she's got like an old hanky because old people carry old hankies. Yeah. And it's like a yellowed old thing. I have a hanky. And she's like, bleh, 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 bleh. <laughs> Lots and of gross like this, yeah. it's, like it's not even, gets... like, phlegm is gross enough as it uh -huh. is, but it's like orange. <laughs> like, I almost got sick. One human yeah, was, being <laughs> has orange phlegm, and and they make it really clear that the girl notices all these uh -huh. weird, disgusting things. And it's kind of like, eh. She takes her dentures out, puts them right on the table. Oh man, yeah. Starts to, and steals the candy. Yeah, while the girl isn't looking, she tries to steal the candy. Uh -huh. Yeah, they really portray this this woman. She's nasty. She keeps coughing, attacking, and she's. It's her fingernails. It's one of the things the first I, I, time you that's see one of my her favorites. is that you see the girl's kind of looking down. Chris is looking down, and then you see. These nasty, Real gnarly fingernails. Yeah, they're like they're really thick, hard, yeah. and discolored, and you know, like someone that's been smoking for like a billion yeah. years, and she's she's like, and it's this real striking sound of the fingers on the top of the desk. There's no subtlety in this movie, but it works in, in the movie. You're, I think you're right. I think there's very little subtlety, but what they do, they do it well. It's it's done it's really these, well, yeah. It's really it's things that are obvious, but they're in they're good. They're clever yeah. things at the same time. Mm -hmm. They're yeah. they're good storytelling yeah. props, you know. And she she wants to give her the give her the, the extension. Yeah, so and the her old boss, woman is begging and begging, yeah. begging, and the girl is she really wants to help, but she knows her jo her future career is on the line, so she goes in to talk with her boss. Yeah, and her boss pretty much tells her it's up to her, but he's pretty much saying that she, the, the bank will make a lot of money by taking her home, by not giving her the extension. And basically, she's not going to get the, uh, it, well, if she does this, she'll make a lot she'll of money and she'll get the promotion. Yeah. And if she does it, she probably won't. But he doesn't say that outright and he leaves it up to her. And he kind of want, he's kind of hitting at her to take, you know, initiative. And so in her mind, she's doing the right thing for her work, even though she's it's in around. competition with this jackass yeah. employee that's in line for the promotion as well. Mm. So she heads back, sets down with this old woman who's looking very pathetic, even yeah. in spite of her being disgusting. You know, she's a real tragic lady who's lived in this house for 30 years and mm -hmm. she's on a fixed income and that's yeah. even you know the woman was trying to defend her in the boss's office like she's on fixed income mm -hmm. she needs help yeah but she lived in this home her whole life. To shove, and yeah. she's like well i'm gonna get this job and and this woman is she my sacrifice you go, yeah. she's my sacrifice yeah. in order to move forward mm -hmm. in my life so you can go live with your family yep. you can go to a nursing home yep. she came up and with then, all these different excuses yeah. to be able to kind of put the put the screws to this poor mm -hmm. old lady the woman actually gets down and begs. Oh yeah. You know. She and, it's really wild because the yeah. way they set it up, you know, the woman was kind of like pissed. And she took her papers and like kind of yeah. like screw you for not take you know for not helping me. But then she stops herself and she says like I am a very proud yeah. woman. Swallows her pride. But and, I am going to beg you. And she gets on her hands and knees yeah. in the bank office, and her some babe. of the people start looking. Yeah, kisses a woman's dre uh, yeah. skirt or dress. I mean, it's freaking the girl out. She's like, no, 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 yeah. because not just because the woman is disgusting, but it's playing on her empathy her because yeah, yeah. the woman is clearly a nice girl. Yeah, she doesn't want to be doing this, yeah. and it makes her feel even more guilty than she already yeah. does. And so even though she pushes away, it's, you know, it's uh, she security. Yeah. And uh, she takes it as her, you know, just dis disrespecting her and shaming her. 
like you don't like work. your onion snail. I really want to try one out. You good? Are you done with your chicken? I'm a good eater. Thank you, sir. You are very welcome. Man, this place is good. Yeah, I really like it. So good. Good call, Annabelle right there. And again, yeah, we got to put this Thank place you. over here, break from uh, reviewing the movie. Um, if you ever uh, look at Cambridge, Cafe. Border Cafe, and there's Cambridge other ones or around. Saugus, Revere yeah. area. It's on Route One. Great restaurant. Really good atmosphere as well. It's loud enough that you can hear yourself talk. Yeah, but still, it has some atmosphere. Like, exactly. like you're out somewhere. They've got like Christmas lights everywhere. It's very colorful. It's dark, but color. It's like they've yeah. got a great balance yeah, of everything. Yeah. Really nice menus. A lot of stuff on there, and we're. I was, uh, you know, thinking about what we were going to do, so I didn't look at it too much. I went for some fajitas. I always like to try fajitas places. They have a lot of cool sounding stuff, though, on the menu. Yes. Yeah. yeah. I would I probably get the black and chicken again. It was, that was awesome. So good. Uh -huh. Yeah, you like that? I really did like that. It was really yeah. tasty. It's really spicy, but it's uh -huh. still, it's not I'm so like spicy the last that it kills where, where, the flavor. Yeah, where, the security comes and tries to take her away. And then the gypsy Yeah, pretty much after this is where the movie just takes crazy. off, really. This is where yeah. the movie really takes off, yeah. I think. The is gypsy. What, how do, what does she do? It was, she doesn't curse her then. It's not then. It's, a, it's she's after when she's... She's just mad. Oh, you know what she said? I wrote it down. I don't know where my notes are. Yeah. But, but she says, you know, because the woman had said she's a very proud woman. You know, she's from the old country mm -hmm. and, she's, and she begged. And she wasn't begging. She was begging because she legitimately... She... She's an old woman, and she she just wanted to be in her home probably until she died, like yeah. many humans do. Mm -hmm. And she said, "You shamed me." Yeah. And she was, you know, you you made me feel ashamed because you you I begged to you, mm -hmm. and you and not only did you reject me, but you've now made everyone here look at me as a weak person. Yeah. And that's not it's who powerful. I am. Yeah. You have, yeah, you have basically, you know, mm -hmm. taken me and destroyed, mm -hmm. you know, who I am. My self-respect is gone. You know, I'm at my darkest hour. Yeah, and that was and all she had left at that worse. point because she just lost her house. Yep, absolutely. So, uh, so you know, she lost everything at this point. Yeah. Yep, she's done because she, you know, she was rejecting. Oh, I don't want to be a burden yeah. to my family by living with them. I yeah. don't want to live in a nursing home that is not for me, which is understandable. Many people feel that way. I'm sure I will too someday. Um, so she was sad. Yeah. And this girl just kind of was adamant. Is even though she was, uh, you know, really clearly uncomfortable, her job was more important, and so. You know, it, the woman got dragged out after kind of like flipping out. Yeah, you know, yeah. she said you shame me, and then she lunged for her and yeah. got. And that's when you first get the scary vibe. Yeah. Of, like this woman is. Yeah, she's not just she this, some scary faces. Yeah. You think and, before she's just pathetic, but the scary person. Well, yeah. And, and, so the boss tells her, you know, you did a good did job. The, right the woman leaves at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. There's a parking garage. She's parked in the parking garage. She recognized the old woman's car because at the bank, at the branch, uh, at the bank branch, you could see out the window, and yeah. the woman came in this old beater. It's this uh, really uh, identifiable car. I don't know uh, exactly what it was. It was some 1960s, really, really unique classic car, but in a terrible shape. You know, it's like mustard color. She goes in the garage and she sees the car. I'm sorry, but if I was this girl and I saw this car in the garage, I'd go back inside and get security that <laughs> right, was still yeah, there. Yeah. Like, you know but what? I'm been, all set. It's been the end this of the movie. already lunched for me today. Mm -hmm. Pretty sure that's her car there. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's time for me to turn around, <laughs> but no. No, she keeps going and walks to her car, and then she hears the woman, like, coughing in her car. And then she's sitting right behind her in the back seat. That was great. Uh huh. Like she sees the handkerchief all the like blow are really out. Good. Yeah, all, all that. Kind of like get you with that, and yeah. then um, see that stuff. Like, all that stuff CGI too, but it, it really works well. The whole, scene in the, the car whole series, when you fight. Yeah, big just fight scene incredible. in the car. Like, uh -huh. so you, and every you time you think it ends, like, you keep going. Turn around to watch the handkerchief, and then you see a black figure in the back, and you can tell because the woman has a very distinctive face. Yeah, you can tell it's her, and then she lunges forward. They struggle. It was an amazing, like, she, yeah. the girl in the front, she's an office girl, so uh -huh. she's got office supplies in her car. Yeah. Attached so she's a stapler, staple gun, staples which is her really eyelids good. shut. Yeah, that was pretty amazing. awesome. Yeah. And then Peter the, laughed. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, when she loses the, uh, she loses the dentures and uh, pretty much gums her, 
<laughs> and there's all this uh, goo coming out. It's really nasty, but but it's awesome. Every time there's something like disgusting in this movie, I crack up. Yeah, there was uh, it was it was a lot of fun to watch with you because uh, both of us were laughing out loud, and then you heard people around us laugh. It was just a really good time. Really, I was really when I saw it. This was my first time. I'm, I was kind of like. What is going on with this movie? Uh, like this is, this is they insane. had the, the beginning, which was really cheesy, and then they have you know this buildup of this character, which is enjoyable. She's a very likable character, and you can see her circumstances, and you know they try to make her identifiable and whatnot. And then they have this old woman and stuff, and then this big crazy, violent but ridiculous scene. You know the yeah. stapling is silly as hell and she's got like a staple in her eye the whole time they're fighting it until <laughs> she crashes the car and her eye like <laughs> blows open because she like you know when you you're like oh <gasps> and she opens her eye and the staple just poing, yeah. like flies off just crazy yeah. like the whole thing is so over the top yeah which really just, just like, makes what it. is yeah that? this is hilarious uh -huh. but what is going on yeah. like this I just had no idea what to expect next. Then, then when she finally gets her out of the car, and she rises up from underneath with the cinder uh, block. Oh, yeah, with the cinder, oh, yeah, block. The cinder block and beats the hell out of the window. Yeah. And then proceeds to gum her arm. Uh, like, goes to attack her, and her mouth is open, like, ah! And the girl, like, takes one of those three-sided rulers. Like a metal ruler? Yeah. And just goes, ah! <laughs> and, like, gets it right in the throat. Yeah, and she kind of coughs and spits it out eventually. Yeah. Cracks the window. Oh. It's just weird. Yeah, it kicks her it's out. It's so much fun. Like, I honestly, even if you haven't seen this movie before, yeah. and maybe you could tell us we're too many spoilers, but it's not going to matter. This no. movie is fun. To, it is so fun to watch. Yeah. Beginning to end. Mm -hmm. I, I really did not. You enjoyed yourself I the whole time. I thought I'd like that, the movie. That's what you watch a movie for, is to enjoy yourself. Yeah, and I thought I would like the movie, because uh -huh. I, I did have expectations from, you know, hearing about it in the past, but my God, it's got scary kind of like ah moments yeah. it has a lot of that and not scary stuff funny, where you really but there's a lot of boo moments yeah and they're good and some of them get you too they got yeah. me anyway like, you know it's kind of like laugh at yourself oh, i can't believe i got scared yeah. by that moments uh, which is fun and then uh <laughs> you know there's a lot of comedy a lot of involved out, a lot of comedy. the story is still good mm -hmm. No, it's not a dis dis I mean, it's a standard story of uh, demonic possession. And yeah. Just to fill you guys in, if you're not familiar with this movie, um, this girl is dating this guy who's a uh, doctor. He's a degree in psychology. He's a young professional. He's a very sweet guy. We heard many people in the audience. There's a couple girls um, in the audience behind us, and it, oh, that's so sweet. It happened a lot. It was really uh -huh. funny to listen to them. But anyway, this girl started having these creepy experiences. She uh, she was with her boyfriend. They were walking in the car, walking wherever. And they pass uh, like a psych, you know, the psychic. They got the big eye, the, yeah. you know, the fluorescent, uh, I mean, neon sign of the eye in the window to go inside. So they go inside, and it's um, interesting because it's um, like an Indian, not Native American, but like yeah. an Indian dude, which yeah, is not, it's not normal. The, right. It's not like no, a gypsy it's kind of cool. Or psychiatrist uh, psych psychology guy he's you know the t quintessential scientific skeptic uh -huh. and he's throwing out one-liners teasing the guy to kind of yeah. ribbon him about you know, it's pretty funny bullshit, it's, it's really. a good it's a good scene too because he's he's out of focus in the back while he's telling her this stuff and he's making faces and, yeah. and going line it was re really well done you know he lets her do this and he actually pays for it and stuff yeah, and in his mind he's doing it because in her mind it's real and, uh, He's doing seen, it to make her happy. Yeah, basically. and we've seen this in a, in a lot of the movies, uh, even The Exorcist, where the um, the psychiatrist suggests that they go to the uh, seek out the religious help because it can help them, even if they don't believe it. If the person uh, getting the exorcist believes it, yeah. it can help them. Yeah, we've like seen that. a lot of demonic possession movies. Yeah, we have. It's kind of a theme. Mm -hmm. So Maybe I, it's like foreshadowing of what will happen yeah, if the Ouija board actually the, does come yeah. out. I have it still sealed. I'm not putting that thing in my house, I'm telling you, man. Uh, will you use it, though, if I bring it to one of these uh, outings? I'll use it, but All right. it may have to be some uh, rituals in advance yeah. to protect me. And You can have all the, <laughs> the badness go to you. Because uh, the thing gonna, is, is are that you going to bring a goat? A goat. That's a good... There's a very cute goat in the movie. He's got a nice cute. little All smile. All the animals. Yeah, I kept looking. Like, it's cute. I like his beard. 
God, there's so much stuff in this movie. I, I'm concerned because I, you know, I could sit here and talk about every single yeah, that, that's moment good, of the movie. I really could. I could sit here and go through the entire movie and, and be entertained. Besides the beginning that you didn't like, it's very unusual for a movie to keep... We've watched a lot of movies that we really like, and eventually they'll lose you at some point. It's very unusual to... Uh, to be with the movie the whole time. Yeah, it was. So, well, I wasn't with it for the first. Yeah, like, yeah few for, for that first minute. But besides that, because I didn't know what the hell was. Yeah, you know, besides like, that, be though, you were. Mm-hmm. But once I realized the pacing of the movie and what they were trying to do, you know, really counterbalancing humor with an actual horror movie. Yeah. And then I thought, yeah, that's fine. It it really gave it like a pass. Yeah. To have that beginning the way it was. There was a lot of little things that you would see, and then they would come up later on in the movie there wasn't anything that had no payoff yeah. which is really annoying the movie but like even we saw the cat the the coin the coin in the envelope yeah all these little oh, things man. all had great payoffs but really the whole payoff at the end of the movie to me is awesome yeah. yeah there's a lot of false like endings in the movie and they're all really good but then the final ending it's so good awesome. yeah and when you think it's almost it's over, clever, there's like and a then great it's scene awesome where the girl down. is kind of like asserting herself finally. Yeah. You know, it's, like you said, this meek girl. Yeah. She's finally like kind of badass yeah. and taking control of her destiny. Which and, I like. I don't want to wreck it. Yeah. I'll leave it at that. Yeah. But <laughs> it's, it's right up what my she alley. does is cool uh-huh. and what happens in yeah. total. And so it's fun to watch. When we were watching in a great line, you said the movie was like a Tom and Jerry. Like yes, I did it's feel It's very that. cartoony. Yeah, there's where, a lot of splatter moments those, that are just like yeah. ridiculous. And just like an, an anvil. Who would have? Who has an anvil tied to a rope in their shed? Yeah, because yeah, it what didn't happen it was is awesome. the woman, uh, the old lady ended up dying, but she kept haunting this girl yeah. and showing up and creeping on her. And the girl was like in a shed. <laughs> yeah, I don't know why. And, but was, and, yeah. the, and the creepy woman like came blasting at her, and the girl like somehow... Well, she, was, it was she, like, was, she was getting stuff that, that she was going to pawn all her stuff off so she could pay for She could pay for help. And she, she had like these old skates in her hand while she thought they would get much money. I'm not sure. Like old ice skates. And then, so she used that to cut the rope. This old rope that was tying an anvil to the ceiling of her shed. Which I'm sure everybody out there has a shed ties an anvil on an old rope. I didn't bring this up to you then and I want to bring it up to you now. I almost asked some of the people when we were talking to them on the street was... Um, so many times people give uh, remakes bad names. This blanket statement, remakes are bad. And another thing they always say is bad is PG-13 horror. This movie is a PG-13 film. Yeah, and I don't amazing. think it hurt the, uh, it hurt the it enjoyment. It was such a good movie. It was really, really fun. Yeah. And uh, I think I've had a lot of critical points to say about a lot of the movies we've seen in the past. Mm-hmm. And this was, it was just excellent. Yeah. I really liked it. Is it my favorite horror movie? No, but it's like all around. And yeah. I could watch it. I certainly could watch it again, yeah. especially with someone else who's never seen it before. Yeah, it was really fun. fun. It was really fun listening to you and watching. Yeah. It was, it was great. I watched it the first time with my brother, and we were at the theater. We both, for the first time, it was so much fun. And I was like, I really think she's like going to like this. I knew you would like the gross sound effects. Oh, it's so good. There's yeah. so many times, you know, there's vomiting of uh, and everything maggots. Was just, just a little oh. bit. Everything would go just a little too long, which made it awesome. Like the like the nosebleed. Oh my god, that was amazing. And it's just like shh, it's a shoot it's like Monty out. Python. Like. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah. Some of the things were just so over the top. Uh, doesn't even make sense, no. even in the context of being a scary movie. Yeah, it's just ridiculous. Mm-hmm. Like you said, Monty Python level yeah. ridiculous, but it still works. And there was you know, even a little kind of. Uh, creepy things. I thought the shadows were cool when the llamas oh, coming yeah. in your house. I, I always yeah. get a kick out of the shadow stuff, yeah. like in, uh, in Bram Stoker's uh, Dracula. It's my favorite oh. part. And I really liked it here too. I thought it was well done. Yeah. It's something creepy when you don't don't see the the thing that's coming for. Them. It's pretty amazing that this movie really could be simultaneously funny and yeah. kind of scary. That's mm-hmm. just a good for time and enjoyment. Seeing. It's it's, it's so much it's fun great. To watch. And I think part of the thing that I liked about it honestly was that there were things that I was laughing at that I wasn't sure other people were laughing at. I was yeah. kind of laughing at the idea that there were people behind us like <laughs> getting really disturbed by some of the visuals. That was fun. No. So if you're going to watch this, I highly recommend you invite someone who has a, a bad gag reflex. Uh-huh. It is 
going to be a riot. I promise. Just pull them in and say, oh, it's just PG-13. <laughs> you just rope them on in and have a good time. I love the movie. Well, I've, seen I it, I've seen it a bunch of times. Yep. And it really had a lot of seeing it in the brattle and seeing it with you know, my buddy and good yep. times all Absolutely. around. Absolutely. I will be liking this on Facebook. Yes. So we give it high thumbs up. I feel... I know there's people out there like they've liked this movie better than The Wolfman. Yeah, it was, you know what was tough is, I, I think if The Wolfman was paired with other classic movies, uh, it would have given a better flavor yeah. to The Wolfman experience. Really I dull. feel bad saying that. I got yeah, all my no, Wolfman attire on. But. And yeah, I love werewolves. I've always loved werewolves since I was a kid. And another but, thing, um, because we're usually against this kind of idea where things are real fast moving, because mm -hmm. we kind of disagreed with people after we saw The Exorcist where they thought it was too slow moving. Yes. But it really worked in this movie. Yes. I can't say enough good things about it. I think we're pretty much saying that this is a great movie. Yeah. I think we've said mm -hmm. a lot without giving away the entire plot. Yeah, we almost did. We could have, like you said, went through I scene by, by scene play. and just had fun talking about them. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So it's good. This could be a good commentary movie. Oh yeah, that would be fun. Mm -hmm. Thumbs up, Brattle Theater. Yeah. Thumbs up, Brattle Theater. Thumbs up to uh, is it on the border? No. It's, it's not. called Border it's not. Cafe. Border Cafe. I like on the border too, but Border Cafe. Thumbs up. Border Cafe. Yeah. Of, of Harvard Square, uh, Cambridge, Massachusetts. People behind us are wondering why we're on snobs camera. Snobs from the Cape. Yes. You racist bastards. <laughs> Where did this come from? Well, why am you I racist? You're calling people like crazy things. I won't even go down that road. You I guys, if say you any people are on the without your headboard, you know what I'm talking yeah. about. I, I know somebody here is talking about Let's that. Let's not go down. There's a whole audience of people that don't know your dark side. <laughs> Probably shouldn't invite I'm them in. I'm just this lighthearted guy. I like this hat, by the way. It's pretty cool. It's very, very warm. It's my winter, my winter hat. I should have worn this hat like this. So yeah, this the sucky thing is, is that a lot of really nice looking, <laughs> nice looking hats are not warm. Yes. I've been told this hat makes me look like I'm a druggie. Really? Yeah, because it's kind of like hat, like I guess like the pothead hat or yeah. something. I'm always told I'm looking like a pothead. Yes, Just but not anymore. <laughs> 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 There are Inside other people. Joke, a great time. Brattle awesome is wonderful. Time. The pe the people there are maybe a little stiff. Be friendlier to us in the future, please. The well, people the working there. One guy was nice. Yeah, yeah. The one guy that runs the show they is really nice. cool. Yeah, they were, but he wasn't there this time. No. Come on, dude. You need to be the taskmaster. Get in there and kick their asses. Yeah, we're we're really trying to put this place over. Seriously, the place you guys I know they don't see. know us. They just think we're like a couple schmucks yeah. that are dressed really goofy and taking pictures goofy. of ourselves. Goofy. I'm but... saying I'm dressing really good. Yeah. Hey, pretty press pass here. Yeah. This is very nice. Who got like a made that shirt beautiful and a vest press pass on. for you? What is this looking like, goofy? It's just a big crazy oh, skull. <laughs> Can't say we're not the normal Cambridge Fair. Who, who I guess. made this? Who made this logo right here? But who made it? She made it. You know, I put you over all the time. I put you over all the time. Man. It's in private emails, but it's private email. But I am always saying thank you, thank you, thank you for uh, this opportunity of my life. Never so on true. camera. I just did it just now. Now I'm save this and loop it. That's right. This is what you save and loop because it's never happening again. I'll send you my private little loop I have. I just You're extended scary. it tonight. I don't need to know. <laughs> just not go down that road. I've actually thought if we we were having a convention and I brought my laptop that I was gonna I was gonna put a, a bunch of pictures on like on something and accidentally hit it and it would be off you or something and it would be oh funny to me but I thought what is really thought like this was real. Oh my god. I thought it'd be hilarious but uh. I'll get you back. That's all I have to say. I don't want to play these games. You go down that road and it will be bad for you. It will, it will be a war of evil perversion. It's right up my alley. <laughs> now we're done. The show's finally picked up. Yes. <laughs> Got what I wanted. And my plan is coming together. Thank you, finally. <laughs> Good times. It's a lot of fun doing this again. Oh yeah, I love this. This yeah. is 
amazing. Yes, it is. It's amazing. I hope you all think it's yeah, so at leave, least a little leave us amazing. Some <laughs> yeah, leave us some Slightly comments. amusing tell would us, be acceptable. Tell, yes, tell us to do more. And, yeah, whoa. give us. Oh, oh shit! What happened? <laughs> it says exchange battery. Yeah. So where's the movie? We we saw the movie earlier at the Brattle Theater, and then we then we review it while we're eating. Thank you. Neil's working the ladies. <laughs> I got the skills. Hey, I'm, I'm a good dude. What you can I do say? What you gotta do, you yeah. gotta do. Right? Yeah. They want a picture with us. Do they? That's nice. Mm -hmm. We can do that. Ten bucks? <laughs> we'll sign an autograph while we're at uh, Say hello. Yeah. What's up? Hi. Good uh, job. Hey, Neil, look at it. No, I don't do my music. Oh, hi, Sarah and I are. Hi. <laughs> But there's so many great graphic things about that movie. Oh, uh, it's it's beautiful. It's, a, it's like a balance. It's like a wonderful balance. Yeah. Like usually I prefer a very creepy serial killer film, but this really was like uh, like a beautiful balance of humor and gore and mm -hmm. suspense. And creepy. Yeah. It was just, just great. Yeah. Anyway, so yes. I think we were actually wrapping it up. Mm -hmm. We were saying that Border Cafe Border is, Cafe uh, is awesome. Mm -hmm. The movie was great. Wolfman is mm -hmm. good to see it in a theater. Yeah, it is. It is. Yeah. The Brattle is always a nice time. The mm -hmm. crowd was a little small this yeah. time, but, but the people had fun. Cold. People yeah. were having fun, and that was a big thing. Yeah. My God, I wish we could have interviewed those girls. I'm telling you, it was so funny. Because it was, it was, I think, probably just one girl. Yeah. There are several rows back, and she commented on everything. Everything. Mm -hmm. And it was, yeah, and like talking about how cute the guy was. And yeah. oh, he's so sweet. Uh -huh. With the engagement ring. Oh, and it was just, I kept looking at Neil and laughing. Yeah. Which is always a good time. So, if you guys want to stick around, we're going to talk about some other stuff, but for. For the normal folks, we're going to be calling it quits here, and yep, we'll see you very soon. Like this video, leave comments, tell us you want to see more. Find us on Facebook. Find us on Facebook, I'll put up all links here. Suggest movies for us to see, plot, talk about, review. It's a lot of fun. Bye. Good drinks. Good food. Good, good friends. Stuff good like time. that. Good, good things like all that. around. Yeah, what is that? <laughs> That's not part of the deal, in a moment, dude. <laughs> But thanks for watching and we'll see you again on Dinner and a Movie.